Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. Most of our stories are fiction but based on real events. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the story. Alrighty then. So, picture this my friends. It's a beautiful sunny day, birds are chirping, flowers are blooming, and I'm strolling down the street whistling a merry tune. Life is good, right? Well, hold on to your hats folks, because things are about to take a hilarious turn. So there I am, minding my own business, when suddenly it hits me like a ton of bricks, it's time for my annual checkup. Now, ordinarily, a trip to the doctor's office might not sound like a barrel of laughs, but let me tell you, this particular visit was a real knee slapper. I arrive at the doctor's office, and I'm greeted by Nurse Betty, who's got a smile as wide as the Grand Canyon. She ushers me into the examination room and tells me to strip down to my skivvies, standard procedure, right? But here's where things get interesting. As I'm standing there in my birthday suit, feeling about as vulnerable as a turtle without its shell, in walks Dr. Johnson, or as I like to call him, Dr. Feelgood. Now, this guy has the bedside manner of a stand-up comedian, and let me tell you, he had me in stitches before he even laid a finger on me. So Dr. Feelgood starts giving me the rundown of what to expect during the prostate exam, and I'm trying my best to keep a straight face, but inside I'm thinking, holy moly, this is gonna be wild. Now, I won't go into too much detail about the exam itself, let's just say it involved a glove, some lubricant, and a whole lot of awkwardness. But here's the kicker, just as Dr. Feelgood is about to get down to business, in bursts Nurse Betty with a tray full of medical instruments, looking like she's ready to perform open-heart surgery. I swear, it was like a scene straight out of a slapstick comedy. Dr. Feelgood and Nurse Betty are bumbling around the room like a couple of clowns at the circus, and I'm lying there on the examination table trying not to wet myself from laughing so hard. But hey, credit where credit's due, Dr. Feelgood finally manages to get the job done, and let me tell you, it was over quicker than you can say who boy. Before I know it, I'm back on my feet, feeling lighter than air and wondering why I was ever worried in the first place. So there you have it, folks, the tale of my unforgettable trip to the doctor's office. Sure, it might not be everyone's idea of a good time, but hey, when life hands you lemons, sometimes you just gotta squeeze them and make a tall glass of lemonade. And let me tell you, that prostate exam was one hell of a lemonade stand. Back in the day, or rather, not so long ago, in a land where punctuality was a virtue held in high regard, there lived a man named Hank. Now, Hank had never been known for his promptness. In fact, if there was one thing Hank excelled at, it was being fashionably late to every event, much to the chagrin of his friends and family. One fateful morning, as Hank prepared for the most important day of his life, his wedding day, disaster struck. The cursed contraption known as his car refused to start, as if in protest against the impending nuptials. Undeterred, Hank attempted to summon a cab, only to discover that on this particular holiday, the entire city had decided to take a break from taxi services. With time slipping away faster than a greased pig at a county fair, Hank resorted to the last-ditch effort of catching a bus to downtown, where he planned to board a train to his wedding venue. Little did he know, this journey would be fraught with more twists and turns than a river winding through the hills of Missouri. As luck would have it, Hank managed to board the wrong bus, a fact he only realized after the vehicle had traveled miles away from his intended destination. Frustrated and flustered, he disembarked and waited for what felt like an eternity for the right bus to arrive, all the while muttering colorful words under his breath that would have made even a riverboat gambler blush. Eventually, Hank managed to find himself back on track, quite literally, as he settled into his seat on the correct bus. But alas, the day's misadventures were far from over. Exhausted from the ordeal, Hank succumbed to the lull of the bus's gentle rocking and drifted off into a deep slumber, oblivious to the passing of time. When he awoke, disoriented and groggy, he realized with horror that he had missed his stop yet again. 
With a sigh that could have been mistaken for the wail of a steamboat whistle, Hank trudged back to the bus stop and waited for yet another ride to his destination. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of delays, Hank arrived at the train station, his heart racing with the hope that he might still make it to his wedding on time. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. As he approached the ticket counter, Hank was informed that due to the holiday schedule, there were no more trains departing in the direction of his wedding venue for the rest of the day. And so, with a heavy heart and a sinking feeling of defeat, Hank realized that he had missed his own wedding. As he stood there on the platform, watching the sun sink below the horizon like a fiery red balloon, Hank couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all. After all, what else could he do but embrace the humor in life's little misadventures? And so, dear reader, let Hank's tale serve as a reminder that even the best laid plans can go awry, and that sometimes, it's okay to be fashionably late to your own wedding. After all, as Mark Twain himself once said, humor is mankind's greatest blessing. All right, let's roll up our sleeves and wade into the cesspool that is the American education system. Buckle up tight, because we're about to embark on a journey through the convoluted maze of standardized testing, outdated curriculum, and bureaucratic nonsense that passes for learning in this country. It's like navigating a labyrinth with blindfolds on, except instead of minotaurs, we're up against mind-numbing lectures, stifling regulations, and a never-ending barrage of pointless homework assignments. So grab your snorkels and prepare to dive headfirst into the murky waters of modern education, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. Now, picture this, you're a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed kid, full of curiosity and wonder, ready to take on the world. You walk into school on your first day, filled with hope and optimism, only to have it crushed faster than a bug on a windshield. From the get-go, it's clear that the school system is rigged against you. They've got you sitting in rows like sardines in a can, listening to some drone drone on about quadratic equations and the War of 1812. Meanwhile, you're wondering when you'll ever use this stuff in real life. But hey, it gets better, or should I say, worse. Along comes no child left behind, the brainchild of some bureaucratic blowhard who thinks standardized testing is the answer to all our problems. Suddenly, it's not about nurturing creativity or critical thinking, it's about teaching to the test, cramming facts into kids' heads like sardines into a can, and hoping they regurgitate them on command. And don't even get me started on the so-called zero-tolerance policies. Oh sure, let's punish kids for being kids, because God forbid they should express themselves or make a mistake. It's like they're trying to churn out a generation of mindless automatons, incapable of independent thought or free expression. But hey, it's not just the students who suffer, it's the teachers too. They're shackled to a curriculum dictated by some faceless bureaucrat in a distant ivory tower forced to sacrifice their passion and creativity on the altar of standardized testing. And what about the kids who don't fit into neat little boxes, who learn differently or march to the beat of their own drum? Well, tough luck for them, they're left behind, cast aside like yesterday's garbage, because heaven forbid we should accommodate diversity or individuality. So there you have it, folks, the sorry state of the American school system brought to you by the powers that be who seem hell-bent on churning out a generation of obedient drones. But hey, don't take my word for it, just ask any kid who's ever sat through a mind-numbing lecture or been punished for thinking outside the box. They'll tell you the same thing, the school system sucks, and it's high time we did something about it. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.